everybody, I'm back and I am excited to be here. It's a beautiful sunny day, so I decided once again to do this session outdoors. Why not get a little fresh air while I'm doing some work at the same time as entertaining you and hopefully leaving you with some tools and tips that are going to help you along with your journey. So something funny happened. I was um, hanging out with some buddies the other night and we were just chatting and talking about how we're all getting older and talking about how uh, some of us are needing glasses and... It was funny actually, yeah, this one's short-sighted and this is far-sighted. And just as a joke, I was like, yeah, I think I'm hindsighted. I see clearly best when I'm looking back on something I've already done or seen. And anyways, we all had a great laugh, it was hilarious. But funny enough, it's an interesting thought. I mean, consider that. You have your, your, your most clearest vision of all is always gonna be hindsight because you can look back with perspective. Right? Nostradamus, for instance, he made all these great predictions, but they were halt they were very difficult to interpret until an event that could have been described within those words actually happened. And then you could go back and look back with hindsight and explain how it all interacted and how that truly was in fact a prediction. I mean, there's so many ways, numerology and there's all so many sciences and there's so many mystic sciences that incorporate hindsight into their mysticism I mean even fortune tellers you know I'm not a big believer in these fortune tellers to be quite honest um, but they know how to do is read people and they know how to feed from people and get information from them so that they can transform it into something that they're waiting to hear and in hindsight you can always see that that's what's been going on but people get caught up in it um, how about people who've been sick before? I mean, we've all come in contact with people who have had cancer, unfortunately. Uh, I'm, I don't think there's a person out there anymore who doesn't know somebody who's been afflicted. And often, not always, because, geez, we know we have no control over it. When it really comes down to it, if it's coming, it's coming. We have some control. Some of us, though, I mean, I've spoken to people with lung cancer. I know people who've had issues with medications. And they clearly look back on their lives having made a decision that was probably not the right decision that could have possibly led them to an early death. But it, when hindsight is involved, it's clear as a bell. So let's take that hindsight theology. Let's take that concept and apply it to a real day-to-day -day life. How can we utilize it? So obviously you can use it as a tool, right? You move forward, you look back, you say, huh, you learn a lesson. Hopefully you use that lesson in your life and you move on with your life. That's the basics. That's the, I don't need to tell any of you that looking back, taking some information there and then using it forward, that's, a, that, that's what life is all about. We make mistakes, we look back, we, we accommodate those changes and we go forward and hopefully not do it again. Because uh, as I've mentioned many times and I love this saying by Albert Einstein, in, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So obviously we've taken that already though. We're well beyond that on our journey. So how can we really use this? So I've had multiple clients and members lately ask me about nighttime snacking. You know, they wake up in the morning and they send me a text or an email with a confession. Or, oh, I ate a row of cookies or, oh, you won't believe. With I, I, My friends were over, so we had Uber Eats and we ordered this and we ordered that. And it's tricky, right? The hours are harder, the, the, the night, it's light out till nine. It's beautiful temperature. You're with your friends. You want to enjoy your life. I mean, in the short term, you are enjoying your life by doing this, right? A piece of pizza with pepperoni or whatever it is you love, that's enjoying life. But only one millisecond of life. Life is grand. Life is massive. Life exists 24 hours a day. And that food that you're enjoying really is only going to last you about three or four minutes if it's that good. So what I'm trying to get at is in hindsight, in the morning when I get these texts, everybody looks back and says, oh God, I shouldn't have done that. I wasn't even that hungry. I can't believe it. I know what I did wrong. I know what I'm going to do next time until next time. So where is that, that break in communication with ourselves? That understanding that, okay, I look back, I see the mistake I've made. I don't want to do it again, yet we do it over and over, all of us. Not just you, not just me. This is part of the human condition. So what are some tools that I've been sharing with a few of my clients this week is that if you're hungry late at night, rather than starve yourself and put yourself in the mindset that you're suffering, that you're, that you're depleting yourself of something you must have, make a good choice. You know, 
cookies, ice cream. I had somebody yesterday who told me that they ate an entire medium pizza. Entire medium pizza. These are all delicious short-term fixes to a really big problem. And feeding into this problem is just really gonna have you beget more problems and beget more problems. The more you feed into this addiction, into this habit, the less likely it is you're gonna be able to break free from it. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to break free from this bad habit and actually incorporate maybe a good habit into our life. Maybe allow yourself to eat something, controlled portions, and maybe have that food work in your favor. So rather than having, so most people tend to crave sweets late at night. That's what I see within my circle of, uh, of client base. And although there are the fat and the salty people out there, but generally it's chocolates and sweets and cookies and ice cream and that kind of good stuff. Uh, Halloween bags. So what I'd like to encourage in that situation is, and I've said this to a few people who are probably watching today, a nice bowl of cereal. A nice bowl of healthy cereal. So because you're craving those sugars, what you can do is retrain your body to still get those sugars, but not those spiking refined sugars that are gonna throw you right off track, but rather healthy sugars. Maybe a complex carbohydrate that, while well, it's not the greatest thing to eat right before bed, it will pass through you, your body knows what to do with it, and it's light enough, for instance, in, a, in the form of a raisin bran cereal. The sugar from the raisin, if it's an organic raisin bran, not coated in sugar and flakes and crispy, crunchy whiteness goodness, just raisins and bran flakes and a little bit of almond milk or whatever your milk of choice is. If you still drink dairy, that's fine too. I drink whole organic milk, it's delicious and rich, but that's not for every. that's part of my journey. And if you prefer almond milk or cashew milk, coconut milk, there's skim milk, goat milk, 1%, 2%, 3.5%. I like milk and most foods in their most natural state. So I like organic whole milk. That being said, it's not for everybody. Have a nice little bowl of cereal. It's gonna bring your sugar level cravings down because it's got a carbohydrate in there. The raisins are packed with sugar. But the great thing about having raisin bran in particular as a nighttime snack is it's tons, tons of dietary fiber. So by the time you go to the washroom in the morning, that fiber and stuff will have run through your whole body. Well, you're not eating too much of it, but sometimes you can even sense the smell of the raisin bran in your morning poop. Like that's how quick that stuff moves through and that could be a good thing. So if you're hungry anyways, and you're gonna be eating, why not make a choice to eat something healthy? Another great food to eat before you go to sleep, grapefruits. Eating a grapefruit before bed will actually stimulate your liver to, uh, and your digestive enzymes and actually helps flush things through. Continually allowing you to digest food effectively while you sleep. It's a great weight loss tool. Years ago in the 70s, there was something called the grapefruit diet. And I think you were instructed to eat a grapefruit 20 minutes before every meal or a half a grapefruit, something to that effect. I don't know, it was a long time ago. I was a kid, I remember hearing about it. But the idea behind it is that you're stimulating your liver to help digest and help create the enzymes and the bile and kickstarts your whole digestive system so that the next meal that comes in is gonna be more easily digested and the nutrients will be more easily absorbed. So what you can do as a snack is a full grapefruit. Don't cut it in half and put sugar on it like your mom used to do. Just slice it up into triangle wedges and eat it. It's delicious. Delicious. They're not like they used to be. In fact, countries like Israel right now are mixing different breeds of citrus fruit. Not genetically modifying, mind you, but actually crossbreeding different fruits to make the most wonderful citrus fruits. They've got one there, I think it's called a Florentine maybe. It is a grapefruit mixed with a Jaffa orange and a Clementine. The combination is like nothing you've ever tasted. It's sour and sweet and juicy and seedless and it's got a thinner, oh my gosh, is it refreshing and off the tree, it's actually somehow magically cold. It's so good. So there's some great fruits. We have access to all these great things, but grapefruit and cereal are a great way to go. So that when you wake up in the morning and you take advantage of that clear hindsight, well, you look back and say, wow, I feel good today. And you look back at what you did and what's your hindsight telling you now, clear as day. It's telling you you made the right choice. It's telling you that you fixed your cravings by making the right choice. It means and clearly dictates to you how you're gonna feel for the rest of the day because you woke up feeling good. You don't feel guilty. You don't feel like you have to punish yourself the next day. You've done a decent thing. You've had two thirds of a cup of bran flakes with a few little raisins and some nice healthy milk. 
and you ate it slowly and mindfully and you paid attention to the taste and the flavor. And by the way, if you're eating real milk, there's something called lactose in milk. Lactose is also a sugar. So these are all ways that you're gonna be able to balance your sugar in a healthier way. Rewiring your, rewiring your brain effectively to not need those spikes in sugar, but just to get some. And eventually those cravings will go away as well. But if they're coming and if they're strong and you're having trouble with these, if this is your main bone of contention and it seems it really is for so many people, then these are your new tricks for the week. Take advantage of some healthier foods. Don't always give in, but if you are, make it a, a, a food choice that's gonna help in your journey, right? You don't have to put yourself and fall off the wagon every time you wanna eat something. Eat something that helps you. Food is our fuel, right? So we've had big meals, they make us tired. I've often, oh, excuse me, I've often said food is our fuel. It's not supposed to make us tired. Well, if that's the case, then if food is our fuel, then can't we use it as a motivational tool as well? Recognizing that it helps us feel better, recognizing that it's filling us with the nutrition we need to have a successful day, week, life. We want longevity, we want flexibility, we want control. The way to do that is to start by making small, achievable changes. That's what this is all about. Make these changes, become aware of your weaknesses and change that one. Give yourself the week to, to absorb it and to, to really let it do its thing and then move on to the next and the next and the next. And before you know it, you're optimized. You're feeling great, you're looking great, and your life is back under your control. You're holding the reins. So tonight, think about what you're gonna snack on. Don't overindulge. Take control over your life. You'll appreciate it in the morning. And when you use that hindsight, otherwise known as memory, well, guess what? You won't be ashamed of yourself. You'll feel empowered. You'll actually feel empowered and ready to hit the next day and have another successful day thereafter. Because when you feel good about yourself having done something, it's much more likely you're gonna do it again, and then again, and then again. And therein lies the secret. You feel good, so you do it again. Once you've done it a few times, you've created a habit. And this habit is a good habit. And it's gonna help you achieve what you're trying to achieve. So I hope this was all clear and not overstated. And if you have ever questions, you know where you can find me. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your food, enjoy your summer, and please make good choices because if you wanna be well, you need to eat well. See you guys.